Good morning, YouTuber. Welcome back to the channel. So today is Monday after the Thanksgiving week. So over the weekend, I've been uh, working on the problem I had with my uh, minivan camper, the 1999 uh, Toyota Sienna with over 200,000 miles, all right? Right now, I think it's sit around 201,000 miles. I bought it with 192,000 miles on it. So I guess I've been driving about 9,000 miles. But uh, this vehicle was not well maintained, so there was all kind of uh, issue with it. And after I took that long trip, I guess I pushed too hard when it going up the hills. One of uh, the number two piston uh, cylinder just lost compression. So if you haven't watched it, I did the test on how I, I find out which number is, which cylinder was bad, low compression. So instead of, uh, I bought a tool, it's almost like 50 bucks for the tool to adjust the valve. It's not really adjusting. You, what you do, you take taking out a disc that uh, help the, the valve go up and down. So there's a certain amount of gap that you need to have. There's a minimum and a maximum. So I just measured the one in the front. I will show you the picture up here somewhere. All right, what it looked like. Well, I mean, I already closed it up, so, but only the cylinder I work is in the front, not in the back. Cause that's the area that have issue. So I will show you a weird chart of all the stuff that going on. You know, I swapped them around in order to make them close up. So with the engine with over 200,000 miles, you know, everything kind of worn out. So everything kind of measured like to the max allowable uh, gap. So in order to close that gap, you have to have a thicker little insert to go in there. But I don't have them. None of them, even though I'm trying to move it around, I won't be able. So I was able to make it work a little bit better now. There's less ticking noise now. And it seemed to run a little bit better now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that and travel with the van like that, even though I still have issue with misfire. But so what? I'm gonna keep driving until uh, April and then figure out from there. But uh, let's go check out uh, what it sounds like when it start up in the morning and when it's warm up. All right. So it's number two, number four, and number six. I will post uh, what's the. Um, what's the compression was measured then. So as you can hear, there's a little bit of uh, clicking going on. But as it warm up, you will see it go away. So this is about two minutes, about two minutes after warm up. So it's not as bad as before. If you, you, if you hear all the ticking noise, it's from uh, these. From these guys, yeah, those ticking noise because they, I like said they on a high side, so that's why you hear the ticking noise. But not from here though. So I know it doesn't sound that much different, but I, 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 I tell you when I drive, I, when I accelerate, I can feel the difference, a little bit more different and a smoother acceleration instead of a hesitation. So what's the lesson taken away from all this? You know, if you plan on building a minivan camper out of an old vehicle, there's a few points that uh, I want to give to you so you don't be you know, don't be that guy like me, you know. Don't ever buy any uh, vehicle that have over 175,000 miles on it because there will be a lot of uh, fixing up that you need to take care of before it's reliable to be on the road, especially if you're going to drive a long distance all across the country. Second thing, 
Don't buy any vehicle that over 15 years old. Because uh, if you live in California, it's very hard to get the smart check tag pass with vehicle that over 15 years old. Third, if, when you test drive the vehicle, any odd noises, especially like metal, metal rubbing, walk away from it. Just stop. Don't, don't, don't even bother with that vehicle. It's something that drive normal that just, you know, if you drive your car, you you know how it sound like, you know, turn up your radio and listen to your car when you drive. There should be like no noises at all, just smooth coasting. And the last but not least, if you know somebody that know that certain vehicle that, that you know, you're going to buy, take them with you, you know. That's a sure way. So like me now, if anybody wants to take me along to test drive a, a generation, uh, the first generation of Toyota Sienna, I, I know every sound and everything going on this vehicle. So if you can get somebody or uh, maybe get a mechanic to go with you to check out a vehicle. But before you even do that, the first three points is the main thing. If you have any of those, just walk away from that vehicle, spend a little bit more. I don't care how cheap the vehicle is. It's, uh, it's going to cost you more in the long run to try to fix it. But it's not all lost with this vehicle, you know. I know right now it will run with run right with five and a half. I say five and a half because one cylinder is still running, but it's not a full, got a full compression. So if you want to follow a guy that's taking a risk on driving a 1999 Toyota Sienna through a, a whole country, for all 48 states. Go ahead. If you first time here, go ahead and subscribe and click on that bell and follow me. So that way when I post, you will see it. And let's see how far this vehicle will take me. All right. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye.